And I wanted to talk about the differences in people that you attract based on your, depends on what term you like to use. I would say vibration, but you know, if you don't want to go there, don't go there. You could say mood. And I think there's a huge difference. And I'm going to give you some examples of that. Okay, so the first one. This one just gets me every time. <laughs> every single time I talk about it, I think about just how much, how I was feeling dictated this entire scenario. But basically, I was in a town that I just didn't want to be in. Because at the time, I... I don't know why I'm saying at the time. I still don't have a car. But at the time, I really could not drive. I didn't have a car and I rode with my mom without getting too personal. She had some stuff to do and this stuff really affected our family. So she, let's just say she had some business to take care of, whatever, at this one building in this town that we both do not want to go to. I don't want to say I was in like, and I was in a good part of that town when this thing happened. So I, needless to say, I was a little confused. Now looking back and self-reflecting, I get it. I get it now. But then I was really confused because I'm like, I went to the one good part of this town. <laughs> Needless to say, we were both doing something that we really just did not want to do. It didn't help that that day was a really big day for our family and it really dictated what was gonna, I mean, I don't want to say our future, but kind of, yeah, our future. So of course she, you know, I couldn't sit in that room with her. I am already kind of upset that day. <laughs> Not really. I guess I wasn't, but I was more so upset for my mom. I walk into this coffee shop and I'm waiting for... I I plan to just wait on her for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I was there for a good two hours. What I didn't know was that this coffee shop apparently closed at three, which would have been fine if everything around it, on that side of the road at least, yeah, we'll get to that later, didn't also close at three. Yes, yeah, so I was stuck and I, right at three, um, somebody comes up to me, unbeknownst to me, because I didn't know it closed at three. I'm just like, you know, typing on my school laptop. And somebody comes up to me and is like, you have to leave. We close at three. And I'm like, what am I going to do? No. I was thinking in my head, okay, I'll just sit on the park bench because there's a park right there, like no big deal, you know? So I'm trying to pull up maps on my phone. So I'm headed out and my mom calls me. She said, hey, I just got out. I didn't see her call. So I'm still walking around aimlessly looking for a place to sit down. <laughs> I finally find a, I don't even know what it was like a park bench, but it was also like a chess, playing chess area. And I, for some reason, I got a little panicked. <sighs> I guess this is where intuition comes in because I really just felt like outcome that occurred in the room that I wasn't allowed to be in was just not good. I just felt that and I was like, oh God, but I was also kind of panicking because I remember I didn't check my phone. I hadn't, um, I don't even know if I had service where I was at. So I didn't know that she called me and said she was on her way. You know what I mean? I didn't know she had gotten out early. So I'm sitting on the park bench and I just kind of feel panicked because I don't know how long I'm going to be there. I really don't want to be in this town. And right when I'm feeling panicked, <laughs> this is what I say, your mood and the way you feel in here attracts weird people when you're unbalanced. Some homeless man comes up to me <laughs> and says, my job like, I'm, I don't even know how old it was. This was only two years ago. I was like 15 or 16 and says, do you have any money? I said, no. Um, maybe he said, he said something like, do you have any cigarettes or whatever? I have been asked for homeless people since the time I was 10 years old if I had any cigarettes. Like, yeah, I really have cigarettes as a child. And I've always said, no, I'm sorry, and then moved on. This was different because this guy just decided to chase me. Yeah, he did. He just decided to chase me down the road. So I said, no, I don't. I'm sorry. And I really didn't. Mind you, at the cafe, this is what you guys don't know, this is kind of a stupid detail, but I'm going to put it in here. I had a giant smoothie, <laughs> because they only had it in one size, and it was so overpriced, and I just had to take it to go, because, like I said, they closed at three. I didn't, God forbid, I, you know, sit there and loiter, <laughs> so I had to leave. And um, I was holding the smoothie, and I was holding my purse in the other hand. And in my head, I'm thinking, if this guy gets aggressive my smoothie is going to go flying. 
That's exactly what happened. That's exactly verbatim what happened. I'm like, oh, I've got to get out of here because all of a sudden, I start walking the other direction because I'm walking towards the bank now because trying to cross the street, trying just to get somewhere else to sit. So I'm walking. He's following me. Not only is he following me, he's boxing me up. He literally looked like, and I'm sure he was harmless, but why are you doing that to me? I was getting angry because I just, I didn't know, I've never been in this situation. You know what I mean? I was getting angry. <laughs> and he's over here boxing me up, looked like he was trying to guard me in a basketball game. He was like shuffling wherever I was walking, he would walk. He was following me. He was going up behind me. And so obviously... Okay, is it me, the purse, or the smoothie? Well, first I've got to get rid of the smoothie, so I absolutely throw the smoothie. And it made it in the trash. That was miraculous. So it made it in the trash. I'm like, okay, thank God. I, that's that's one less thing I have to hold. I quickly put my phone in my purse. And I just clutch my purse, and I'm kind of running at this point. And then I'm like, okay, he's not really paying attention. I'm pretty sure he's on drugs. He's kind of harassing other people at this point, I think, asking them for money. Let's see if I can get into another building because the crosswalk is taking forever. You know, opening all the doors, they all close at 3, 2 or noon. I'm opening. I'm like, okay, Chase Bank. That's, that's going to be open, right? Nope. They closed at noon. So I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do? At this, at this point, he doesn't really look like he's paying attention to me. And he's like yards away. So I'm like, okay, I'll just cross the street. So I hit the crosswalk button. It's taking forever. And he just comes running down to follow me again. Yeah, to follow me again. So I'm like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. And just when he starts following me again, the crosswalk turns green or whatever. Not turns green, but like it tells me I can walk. And I'm like, oh, thank God. So I walk across the crosswalk. That man is still following me. And my mom, conveniently enough, thank God, was right there. If not, I mean, there was a restaurant right there. I would have probably just ran in that. And she was there. After that scenario... I mean, there are tons of things I could have done, right? After that, I would have probably called 911 or, I don't know, screened or something. There are a lot of things I could have done. But what really caused that scenario? Well, I'm not going to blame myself because why would you harass some teenage girl? Why would you do that? <laughs> so obviously he was on drugs or something. Still wrong to do, but whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I attracted that because I was in a panicked state and I was on a really low vibration because I was panicked for two reasons. I was panicked one reason because I couldn't find a spot to sit and I was in a town that I really did not want to be in and number two because of what our what our situation was personally. So yeah, I attracted that and then <laughs> woohoo! Homeless man chasing me and um... After that, I kind of started to be more mindful of how our moods affect who we attract around us, both in interpersonal relationships, because I had pretty much cleared out all of the, like, I didn't attract, um, by that time, I don't think, I wasn't attracting narcissists anymore. Okay, I'm just going to say, when you haven't healed in general, you're still going to attract that everywhere. I mean, you could cut off as many people as you want. And that's still, I would still encourage cutting off narcissistic people because you don't need to be around those people at all. But you don't really get to the root of the problem, which is why did you attract that in the first place? And why are you attracted maybe to that? I don't know. Whatever. It's really not your fault. It's just something I really had to pay attention to. So. Going forward to my next story, 